In some of the coldest and iciest places on Earth, there's a special group of birds that are truly amazing. Welcome to the world of penguins. Penguins are a special group of birds that don't fly. Instead, they're fantastic swimmers. They belong to a group called Sphiniciformes and are part of the Sphinicidae family. You'll mostly find penguins in the southern hemisphere, but there's one exception, the Galapagos penguin which lives north of the equator. Now what makes penguins so incredible in the water? It's all about their dark and white feathers, which act like camouflage, and those flipper-like wings? They're perfect for swimming. Penguins usually dine on krill, fish, squid, and other tasty sea creatures. They catch their food with their bills and swallow it whole, all while gracefully gliding through the water. They even have spiky tongues and strong jaws to grip onto slippery prey. But here's the thing. Penguins aren't just ocean experts, they're also landlubbers. They split their time, spending about half on land and the other half on the sea. Now, when it comes to size, there's quite a range. The biggest penguin around is the emperor penguin. Imagine them standing at about 3 feet 7 inches tall and weighing as much as 77 pounds. On the flip side, the little blue penguin, also known as the fairy penguin, is the tiniest. They're only about 12 to 13 inches tall and weigh between 2.6 to 2.9 pounds. These days you'll find the larger penguins in colder spots and the smaller ones in warmer areas. But here's a fun fact. In the past, there were some gigantic penguins. They were as tall and heavy as a grown-up human. Imagine meeting one of those on a beach stroll. These supersized penguins used to hang out in places like the sub-Antarctic regions, and there was even a giant species living about 2,000 kilometers south of the equator around 35 million years ago, back when the Earth was warmer than it is today. Penguins' wings might look similar to those of flying birds, but there's a crucial difference. Their wing bones are shorter and stouter, transforming them into powerful flippers, perfect for swimming rather than soaring through the skies. In the water, penguins are poetry in motion. They're swimming akin to a bird's flight in the air. Beneath their sleek feathers, they carry a pocket of air that provides buoyancy and insulation against the frigid waters. On land, they cleverly use their tails and wings to maintain balance while standing upright. Penguins are all about camouflage. They're countershaded, which means they have black backs and wings paired with white fronts. This clever trick helps them blend in with their surroundings. From below, predators like orcas or leopard seals find it hard to distinguish a white penguin's belly from the reflective water surface, giving penguins an upper hand. When it's time to hit the water, Gen 2 penguins are the speed demons, reaching up to about 22 miles an hour as they hunt for food or evade predators. They can also plunge to impressive depths, reaching about 560 to 660 feet. Smaller penguins usually stick to the surface, where they catch their prey in short dives, lasting just a minute or two. But the big guys, like emperor penguins, are deep-sea divers, capable of reaching approximately 1,800 feet in their quest for food. On land, penguins have their unique moves. They waddle on their feet or slide gracefully on their bellies across the snow, using their feet to steer and propel themselves. This sliding, called tobogganing, helps them move quickly while conserving energy. If they need to pick up the pace or navigate steep terrain, they jump with both feet together. Penguins have pretty average hearing for birds, which they use to find each other in bustling colonies. But their eyes are where they truly shine. Adapted for underwater vision, their eyes are their primary tools for locating prey and avoiding predators. While in the air, they might be a bit nearsighted, but research hasn't entirely confirmed this notion. Regardless, these remarkable birds have adapted brilliantly to their challenging environments, becoming true masters of land and sea. Penguins, those champions of the cold, have some remarkable tricks up their feathered sleeves to stay toasty in frigid waters and icy landscapes. Penguins sport a thick layer of insulating feathers, their very own downy jackets. These feathers are the ultimate cold-fighting gear, keeping them snug in the chilly waters where heat loss is rapid. What's truly intriguing is that penguins like the emperor penguin don't have the densest feather coverage among polar birds. They have about nine feathers per square centimeter, which is less than some other Antarctic birds. But here's the magic. They have not one, not two, but four types of feathers. 
First, there are after feathers, downy plumes that attach directly to the main feathers, believed to help conserve heat underwater. Then there are plumules, small, dense down feathers that nestle close to their skin, providing extra warmth. And lastly, phyloplumes, tiny naked shafts ending in a splay of fibers. These were thought to give flying birds a sense of their plumage and its condition, but penguins preen meticulously too. The emperor penguin, known for its massive size, minimizes relative surface area, reducing heat loss. It also has a clever trick up its flipper, the ability to control blood flow to its extremities, ensuring the cold doesn't get the best of them. When winter hits the Antarctic hard, and the females head to sea for food, the males huddle together to survive the harsh weather, rotating positions for warmth. All penguins, even those in warmer climates, have a built-in heat exchanger called the humeral plexus. This system uses multiple branches of the axillary artery in their flippers, allowing cold blood to be warmed by blood that has already been heated. It's an energy-efficient way to stay warm and why these small creatures can endure extreme cold. Oh, and did you know? Penguins can sip salt water. They have a supraorbital gland that filters excess salt from their bloodstream, excreting it in a concentrated fluid from their nasal passages. Interestingly, the term penguin was initially used for a bird called the great auk in the northern hemisphere. Although they might look similar, penguins and great auks aren't closely related. They're a fascinating example of convergent evolution. Habitat Penguins are world travelers, but not just in icy domains. While most penguin species call the Southern Hemisphere home, they don't stick solely to polar realms like Antarctica. Penguins are more versatile than you might think. Not all of them reside in frigid Antarctica. Only a handful of species venture so far south. Some penguins prefer the temperate zone, which means they live in areas with milder climates. For example, the Galapagos penguin. They reside as far north as the Galapagos Islands. But there's a twist. These penguins owe their presence to the cold, nutrient-rich waters of the Antarctic Humboldt Current that surrounds these islands. Now, here's an interesting debate. Some scientists suggest that penguins follow Bergman's rule, which means larger penguin populations live at higher latitudes, while smaller ones stay closer to the equator. However, this theory has its skeptics. Fossil evidence of penguin species seems to challenge this idea. Others argue that factors like ocean currents and upwellings play a more significant role in shaping penguin diversity than just latitude alone. Penguins have set up homes in various corners of the world. You can find major penguin populations in places like Angola, Antarctica, Argentina, Australia, Chile, Namibia, New Zealand, and South Africa. But here's a recent twist. A study published in Antarctic Science revealed that the remote Ile aux Cochons in France, once home to two million penguins, has seen a dramatic population collapse, leaving only around 200,000 of these charming birds behind. Behavior. Penguins are known for their bustling breeding colonies, and these gatherings come in all sizes, from cozy hundred-pair communities for Gen 2 penguins to bustling cities of several hundred thousand, home to the likes of king, macaroni, and chinstrap penguins. Living in such close quarters leads to a lot of social interaction among penguins. They've developed quite a repertoire of visual and vocal displays. Some of these behaviors are friendly, like bowing, while others are more confrontational, meant to establish dominance or resolve conflicts. Penguins take their love lives seriously. They form monogamous pairs during the breeding season. However, not all couples stay together forever. The rate of recoupling can vary dramatically. Most penguins lay two eggs in a single clutch, except for the emperor and king penguins, who opt for a single-egg strategy. Parenting is a shared responsibility among penguins, except for the emperor penguin dads, who do it all alone. These shifts of egg incubation can last for days or even weeks, as one parent stays with the eggs while the other ventures out to sea for food. Penguins generally raise just one brood of chicks each season. But there's an exception. The little penguin can manage two or three broods in a season. Penguin eggs are unique. They are proportionally smaller than those of any other bird species, making them 4.7% of their mother's weight for little penguins and a mere 2.3% for emperor penguins. The eggshell, relatively thick, constitutes a significant portion of the egg's weight, helping to combat dehydration and minimize the risk of breakage.
Even when a chick hatches, some yolk often remains, acting as a safety buffer in case the parents are delayed in returning with food. In the world of penguins, community plays a role too. In species like the emperor and king penguins, chicks gather in large groups called creches, where they grow and learn together under the watchful eyes of multiple parents. Conservation status. Penguin conservation is a concern. Many penguin species are experiencing declining populations and their conservation statuses range from least concerned to endangered on the IUCN Red List. Penguins face various threats, including habitat loss, climate change, and overfishing of their food sources. Conservation efforts, scientific research, and public awareness are essential to protect these incredible birds and their ecosystems.